So uh, I'm getting ready to start um, a new system here. Um, this is by Shot, Shock, and Faith, or uh, as the French would have it, uh, forgive my mangled pronunciation, but Par la Feu, la Fer, et la Foi. Uh, these are the French words of religion, 1562 to 1598. Um, this particular game, as uh, is from Hexasim, and has what four or five battles um, from the Wars of Religion uh, listed somewhere here. Saint Denis, uh, Jarnac, uh, La Roche Labelle, Labille, I don't know how to pronounce that. Kutra and R RK, I'm assuming. Um, there's a, another system that I just played fairly recently um, on this same topic. Um, that would be over here, uh, the Avec Infini Regret. Um, this is from uh, Vevictus, uh, which is a magazine, but uh, another French publisher. And uh, sometimes um, outside of their magazine publication, they will do these folio games. So. Um, that's where you've got uh, the Avec Infinite Regret. Um, I played this recently at Advance After Combat, uh, or Advance After Combat Con, or as we call it, Advance After Combat. Um, I uh, played um, one of the scenarios from this, and uh, as I learned after the fact, played it completely wrong. Um, I completely messed up the order system, which is similar in a lot of ways to... Uh, the GMT musket and pike system, where your uh, different wings of your army have different orders and it becomes very difficult to change those orders. Uh, what I found out was we were changing the orders at will and uh, should not have been changing them so easily. So um, this system, from what I've read of the rules so far, uh, has uh, an option for orders. Um, it's considered an advanced rule. so. The, uh, the simpler version of the rules does not actually have um, orders, but the more advanced version does. And uh, so your different units will have different types of orders. And here, as opposed to the different wings of your army, um, what you have on these um, scenario setup charts are different regiments. Um, so as opposed to just having your sort of left, center, and right wing, you have your vanguard, and then various regiments um, that support. And so the setup here actually shows the orders that each um, regiment or vanguard is under uh, for the start of the scenario. And then you can change those accordingly if you use the optional orders rules. So... Um, I will probably use the optional orders, but um, not, not entirely sure yet if I will. But that's the plan. Um, I'm not going to use all of the uh, all of the options uh, to start with. Um, there's one option that uses something called. Let me pull it up in the rule book here because it's another French term that I will probably get badly wrong. Um, Back here into the optional rules, this uh, Les Enfants Perdus. Um, essentially what this sounds like to me is you can break down um, these individual units, uh, particularly here, um, these guys that are the arquebusiers or your mounted uh, musketeers. You can basically break them down into multiple units. Um, which seems to me a little bit kind of like skirmishers maybe in a Napoleonic type scenario where you could break down a unit and have these, um, I'm thinking here of um, the, oh, what is it, not the, uh, not the Zucker games, but the, um, actually I think I've got them sitting right down there, uh, the Quattro Bataille or Le Retour de l'Empereur. Um, I'm, I'm totally blanking on the designer here, uh, but a French Frenchman 
another Frenchman, but he that that has a, a, a skirmisher rule for those particular games where you can um, have your units broken down or not broken down, but each unit creates um, these these sort of skirmishers that can't really fight, but they essentially screen um, the uh, enemy. So this is kind of what the this this rule um, seems kind of similar in that way in that regard to me uh, as far as this is concerned uh, just because you can break down these units and uh, into kind of non fighting but still um, effective affecting movement type of units but uh, I think for my first game I won't actually play with those though um, we'll just see kind of how the combat works how the order system works and uh, figure it out from there. Um, one of the differences right away uh, noticed in this game is the map is an area control and I don't know if area control is the right way but it's not hexes it's broken down into areas uh, but there are still zocks so you, ex you exert zocks into all adjacent spaces um, spaces that are that have multiple adjoining points or what they call uh, was it junction points or something similar um, where you have more than two spaces intersecting so maybe intersection points but like those three spaces right there are all adjacent to each other um, I'm not sure if there's a four point spot here most of these appear to be three point spots there's a four point so all four of those spaces are actually adjacent to each other um, and you can move across that junction um, to any adjacent space. So uh, a little different from the the hex grid uh, that we're used to with wargaming. Um, but you know, there's plenty of wargames that still have this kind of area effect. Um, but in terms of combat and things like that, the the, the combat still seems it's fairly light in this game um, and seems similar uh, to Avec Infinity Regret or uh, Musket and Pike, which I'm um, sitting somewhere. There we go. Um, which I have most of. I do not have the first one. I'm still waiting on that reprint of this Accursed Civil War. Um, so. Uh, I will be curious to see how this plays compared to uh, Avec Infinity Le uh, Regret. Um, and this, I believe, yeah, was hex based. You can see from the map there. Um, there is a difference. I feel like the, the, despite this being a folio as opposed to a box game, the components are a little bit better in the uh, Vevictus publication. Um, the artwork is a little more crisp. Um, if you look at this fantastic picture on the cover of the um, of like Infinity Regret, I can zoom in here without getting too jittery. Um, just great artwork and great components. Uh, the, the counters in this, um, you know, all of your different and uh, arquebusier, musketeer, pikeman units all have like different graphics for each different counter because you know you're dealing with um, individual regiments of troops that had different uniforms and different colors and all kinds of things. So the, the artwork's really cool in that regard. This uh, you know box, great. I love boxes, but the artwork is a little rougher. Um, it's it maybe hard to tell from the video here, but this is just you know has that kind of slightly muddy, slightly um, muted colors kind of look from a kind of badly scaled image or in a um, not particularly well. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the resolution of the artwork on the cover here is not great. Um, it's kind of the, the type of artwork and the type of composition and color and resolution that I've seen on the cover of some 
lower budget video game <laughs> type publications. Um, but you know, the color, the uh, the rule book, it's kind of on that glossy paper, which is fine. Um, this is a little better quality glossy paper than say like what GMT used um, for about a year or two years there where they had that, everything was in color, but it was that really um, very fragile and kind of thin uh, stock paper that would get, you know, if you got any moisture on it at all, if your hands were a little damp or sweaty or anything, um, the, the pages would just kind of wrinkle up and get crinkly. Um, this isn't quite that cheap, um, so it's a little better, a little better stock, um, still full color though, um, so nice in that regard. Um, but the artwork, not, just not quite as crisp um, as what you see in the uh, the Vevictus publication, so uh, which is slightly different than uh, my experience with Hexa Sim at this point. Although, you know, this is the the uh, player aid, and that's like super heavy, really good cardstock, and there's two of them. Uh, you know, the Vevictus thing for Avec and Fenirigret had uh, laminated um, player aid charts, but I think they only had one of them, you know, which is fine for folio. For box game, you want multiples of these, and they're really nice. Um, heavy card stock and in color. Uh, my only experience with Hexasim uh, otherwise has been... I can find it here... Um, Victory Roads and Liberty Roads, and which I haven't actually played yet, um, but I've heard many, many good things about Liberty Roads, maybe some less good things about Victory Roads, but I do love that counter art um, for both of those games, which uses a lot of uh, imagery of individual units, a lot of symbols of individual units in terms of you know unit identification patches or, uh, or symbols. Uh, which is not seen often enough in games to my liking, uh, especially in modern World War II type stuff. Uh, so, um, Hexasim has been really cool in, uh, in including that kind of stuff. Uh, here, obviously, <laughs> you don't have unit identification badges or anything like that. Uh, you don't have individual units here. Uh, or, well, I mean, you do, but they're not, um, you know, the 101st Airborne or something. So, you know, counter artwork, not bad. Um, they did include, if you can see here on these brown counters, there is, um, like the numbers are in black on brown, not great, um, especially because you can see there's brackets there, and one of the key identifiers of the game is brackets versus parentheses. And with the, the black on brown, kind of hard to tell. So they printed a whole other counter sheet uh, included in the box that has a white outline around the black printed numbers and letters. Um, I did not end up using those just because I thought they looked a little too busy. So I, I didn't have particular difficulty in reading the black on brown uh, without the white outline. So that's what I punched. So I just used the original counters. So we'll see how it works. Um, I will go through the rules on this and um, run through the first turn. The the battle that I've laid out here is Jarnock. Uh, I assume that's a, like a soft J and not something like Yarnock, but I'm going to guess it's French, so probably Jarnock. Uh, this is 1569, so what, 13th March, maybe Mars in French is March. Um, so that's a particular battle I'm doing here. We will see, uh, I'll go through the rules and play through a turn and come back and kind of recap. And uh, we will start walking our way through this.